If you're buying and selling guitars regularly, the thing you must have is the price guide. Or should you? Is this thing actually accurate? Should you spend 30 bucks each year on a magazine that's only printed one time a year that isn't really connected to actual transactions, but is it actually helpful? So this video is all about the price guide. Now what I want to do is I want to take all of my guitars, Martins, some Gibsons, some Hassan Daltons, some Waterloos, uh, just custom guitars from all around the country. Let's hold them against the price guide and see how accurate or inaccurate the price guide actually is. Let's come out of the gate swinging. The first guitar I want to show you and talk about is a 1961 Gibson J45. Made in 1961, this is a super cool round shouldered, spruce topped, mahogany back and sides, a uh, shorter scale, just monster of a guitar. This guitar belongs to a family friend of mine. This is actually the first vintage guitar I ever sold when I worked in a vintage guitar shop. The price guide on the J45 says that this is somewhere between $3,200 and $4,200. That's a pretty big swing and that's a lot of money. If you've seen the video on this guitar, this guitar has a lot of damage. Uh, it has a neck crack that involves two cracks on the front, two cracks on the back. The tuner buttons have been swapped. There's three cracks on the top of this guitar. There's a hole in this guitar. The bridge has been swapped. The bridge was then modified. Uh, there is a crack on the side. There's three cracks on the back. This guitar is very much not excellent condition, but it sounds wonderful. And it really is just a monster of a guitar. So I said in that video that I think this guitar is somewhere between 2000 and 2500 with all the damage. I think that that's a little low, especially because a couple factors right now. Number one, it's 2021 and guitars are all worth more than they've ever been worth. The other part of this is $3,200 for a clean one is, I mean, it's really hard to find clean ones. I think that this guitar, I said 2000 to 2500, I feel like I could be comfortable and I could make a case for this being a 25, maybe a $3,000 guitar. So with this one, I think the price guide is pretty accurate. I think that's pretty dead on. Um, you'd be really hard to find clean early 60s round shoulder J45s, um, much less than $3,000. Here's the next guitar I want to talk about. This is a 1996 Martin D18 VFs. This is a slotted headstock, um, big honking V neck, and a 12 fret body. So look how big that body is. So the price guy gives this one $2,000 to $2,250, which I think is pretty much on the money. I think it's a smidge low. Uh, right now, D18s are really hot. They're just really desirable. The other thing with this is it's a really rare feature set. So 12 frets are becoming more popular. Slot headstocks are really cool. I think that that's really dead on for me. I don't want to sell this guitar less than $2,400. Here is a serious curveball in the brand new Guild D55. So the D55 is the absolute flagship guitar for Guild guitars right now. Now the problem is Guild has not been Guild for very long. Um, most recently Guild is owned by Cordoba, which they've done a really good job to bring them back to full prominent glory. Before that, they bounced around for a while being owned by Fender. Fender ran them into the ground. Before that, it was Tacoma. And then before that, it was they were in Westerly, Rhode Island. And then they were in Hoboken for a while. How that intersects with the price guide is that it makes it really complicated to actually get an accurate price. So the price guide gives these $1,600 to $2,000. I think that's crazy. I think that's right on for the Tacoma era. But if you're looking at the older Westerly, Rhode Island ones, if you're looking at the Connecticut ones, and if you're looking at the new ones, like this is a $3,800 guitar now, and I do not think you could find one of these for, I mean, $2,500 would be a steal. I think that this is the first example in which the price guide is almost completely wrong. Uh, no, it's completely wrong. The tiny little bit of almost with uh, the Tacoma era. Up next is my wonderful and thumpy 12 fret uh, from Waterloo. This is my WLS. I own many guitars that are nicer than this and this one still is just my favorite. If the house is on fire, this is the guitar I'm running to get. There's something just really wonderful about this to me. And this is another one where the price guide is trying to hurt my feelings. So I bought this guitar. There's a great video of when I bought this. I told the story and um, so I bought this guitar about a year ago 
and I bought it for $1,600, which I still think is a steal. Um, I have not seen them anywhere close to that price. They're all $2,200, maybe $2,000, but they're really rare. And new Waterloos, because of COVID and the pandemic and people that were building Waterloo guitars got moved into building more Callings because they're owned by the same company. Um, and so Waterloo production has really dropped. So now Waterloo are some of the coolest acoustic guitars you can buy and you can barely buy them because just so few are actually getting out now. So it's just, you know, 2021, it's the year of supply chain issues. So these guitars, they're just, there is way more demand than there is supply. So all of that to say, when I look at the price guide and the price guide gives this guitar 1625, I just think, you are crazy. There is no possible way. I would buy a bunch of these at $1,600. Um, and I, you know, I think that this guitar is pretty easily $2,000. Easy. So I've also put a K and K in this. Mine has a pick guard. So it's very unusual. If you want one of these straps, they are so cool. You can use code Jeremy10. Uh, I'll put all that stuff in the description down below. The price guide gives this a price that I just think is crazy. So this is another one in which the price guide is just wrong. Here's a fun one. Let's go to some electric guitars. So this is my 1985. Technically, this is an 86. The neck date is September of 86. All the other parts are 85. I think that this is the absolute first year uh, Fender Paisley reissues made in Japan. Uh, I bought this guitar uh, in New Orleans and I bought it from a guy who bought it from a guy who I used to see play it in the French Quarter in New Orleans. This is just I mean, my favorite Telecaster. I paid $1,000 for this six years ago. So in 2015, I paid $1,000. Since then, I've put probably three or $400 into Seymour Duncan Antiquity uh, Broadcaster or whatever their early Telecaster pickups are. I've also changed everything out into CTS Harness and I've swapped the tuners to their repros, but they're really good looking relic nickel tuners. This guitar, another one that a price, the price guide is just wrong. The price guide on this says that this guitar should be 625 to 850, which I mean, yeah, it's, there's no way. Look on Reverb, look on eBay, look on Craigslist, look on Facebook Marketplace. There is no possible way that you would find this guitar for 600 bucks. You might find some of the mid nineties, the real clean ones that are even more pink than this and they have really shiny chrome uh, rather than nickel hardware. You might find those for 650 or 700 bucks, uh, but there is just no possible way. I know that I'm in this steep, but I also know that the price guide is wrong. I think the real number on this is probably around a thousand bucks, 1200 bucks. This guitar came into our lives right at the same time that our first kids came in. And um, yeah, I just, I want to hang on to this one forever. So again, the price guide on this one is just really wrong. Continuing the electric guitar train, this is my Fender American Professional 2. Now, one of the downsides of the price guide is that they're not, it doesn't accurately keep up all the time. And so with this, uh, they only have the American Professional. They don't have the American Professional 2. And I understand this guitar was launched in what, September of last year. And so for publishing and getting everything together, this guitar didn't technically exist while they were still putting that uh, book together. I think it says 900 to $1,200 on the American Pro ones, which those are really cool guitars. Now, American Strats have had a, they're more expensive now than they have been, but for a long time, 20 years or so, you could find 90s, 2000s, uh, American Strats and Tellys, Sunbursts, normal colors, black, white. The real basic kind of middle of the road stuff you could find for five or 600 bucks. But all of those have come up in the last couple of years because electric guitar definitely is more popular now than it was before. And Telecasters in particular are coming up in value a lot. Now with this, uh, this guitar, I think, I think these are what, $15.99, uh, $14.99, somewhere in there. This is a Miami Blue with a Rosewood board. Um, this is my favorite Strat I've ever owned. This guitar and the price guide, I think the price guide's pretty close on this. Like I think that this guitar would be a thousand bucks, 1200 bucks. It's a lot of money um, because if you, it, especially for someone that has been around, um, used Tellys and Strats for so long, and there's just so many of them, for so long that you could buy 
for 500 bucks, 700 bucks. I, I've heard years ago that since 1984, they've made 100 uh, American Strats, Tele's, P bases, and Jazz bases a day. I don't know if that's true. And I'm sure that that's not true in the last year with uh, pandemic and coronavirus and all this stuff. Uh, but the price guide is pretty close on this one. So we'll give this one, yeah, it, it's pretty close. Now, here comes the big daddy. This is my 1970 Martin D41. This is the best that they can get uh, from Martin. Now there's only two models technically above this. Uh, in the standard line, there's a D42 and a D45. The D45 and the D41 are quite similar. Um, the biggest one is there would be another inlay here on the first fret. All of the hexagons would be bigger. There would also be abalone around the fingerboard extension, around the neck, around the back. There would just be more abalone. But effectively, as far as materials, the guitar is about the same. And so anyway, I bought this. This belonged to my old mentor, Sam. He was my first vintage guitar friend. And uh, well, I didn't buy it from him. He passed away while we were still living in New Orleans. It went to a guy that lives here in the Valley. And about a year ago, he reached out, not even a year ago, around Christmas of last year, he reached out and said, hey, I think you'd like to own this guitar. And so he gave me the chance to, to, uh, to own it. So since then, I've done a little bit. I've had some stuff fixed, but for the most part, it still needs some work. Needs a neck reset. So let's keep that in mind. It needs a $500 repair. And if you don't know what a neck reset is, is when basically the, the action is too high, the saddle is as low as you can get it, um, and it's still, the action is still too high. So the only way to fix that is to reset the neck at the proper angle. So you would take the neck off, you would then shim it back, and so all of this neck would move back uh, more, and then all of that allows you to get the action down lower, and you would put a new saddle in it, so the new saddle would be the proper height. Yeah, the price guide uh, gives this uh, $3,900 or so. Now, I think that's low. It's not far off, but I think this is a $4,500 guitar um, because it's so early, so cool, so iconic looking, and just irreplaceable. You, can't, you cannot find another one. You only, If you wanted to buy a D41, you only have a couple choices to get this old. And this is the cleanest and oldest that is still pretty affordable. Now, I only have $2,500 in this guitar, and that was the deal that we made, and he was super happy with that. And uh, if you wanna see, I'll put a video, there's a link up here that I'll put uh, for the video of buying this guitar earlier this year. So yeah, overall on, on the price guide on the D41, I think it's okay. Um, that's where the price guide seems to be strongest is in Martins and Gibsons and Fenders. Uh, those are kind of the three that, like those are the most reliable prices. Uh, so, all of that. There's one more guitar that I have. I have my Huss and Dalton TDM. My Huss and Dalton TDM is not reflected in the price guide. I'm, I'm surprised that the Waterloo made it, but the Huss and Dalton has not. Now, my Huss and Dalton is a TDM. It's basically a hot rotted 18 style guitar. It is wonderful. It is awesome. I paid $2,000 for it. I know since I bought it and I made a video about it, now, all of those guitars are now $3,000. Like you do not find a TDM less than $3,000. Um, I, and I, I think that that's a good price. I think that they're worth that. Now mine has absolutely been played and has been used. And I mean, it probably needs some fret work coming up here soon, but it is my ride or die guitar that works with me every day. It just, it goes to every show. And uh, so, but what's interesting in the price guide, you open the book, and basically the price guide just gives you a vague description like uh, guitars made in Stanton, Virginia, traditional Jeff Huss, Mark Dalton. It doesn't give you any actual information. They're kind of the biggest of the really small guys. They make 300 or so guitars a year, which that's enough. That's enough and they're expensive enough that it would be helpful. But I, it's probably also the ratio of how many custom guitars they're making versus standard models. Where I have a standard, it's a Sitka spruce top, it's a mahogany back and sides. It is just a very normal uh, kind of guitar coming out of their place. So the price guide, I think through this, I haven't actually kept track as I've done this video, but I'll give I'll give the tally uh, here of like how many I think are were right on the price and how many I think were wrong. Overall, I think that the strengths of the price guide is that it gives you incredibly detailed descriptions of each model that you probably wouldn't know or just remember. This will make you look a lot smarter and give you a lot more information to make 
the right decision whether you should buy a guitar, whether you should sell a guitar, what guitar you should dream of or aim for, where the price guide is limited is the fact that this is not necessarily tied to actual transactions. One of the absolute strengths of Reverb's price guide is that it's tied to real, what are people paying for this over time? Having data helps you make informed decisions. Informed decisions are the way that you get to build a guitar collection you get to keep, not guitar collections that run you, uh, that just bleed you dry and then make it to where your family is being asked to sacrifice so that you can keep playing guitars. I want you to be able to buy and sell guitars in a way that makes some money and is it brings life to you, makes space in your family, all of those things. So this does not capture or reflect the volatility that we are now experiencing in the used guitar world. Look at any pedal that Josh Scott talks about on the JHS show. Look at any um, guitar that that pedal show would highlight. You have these influencers who bring influence to the market. Look at Rhett's video on the Skylark. Rhett made that and now the market has never recovered. Those amps are now super expensive. So more often than not, this will be more wrong than it is right, but I still think you should absolutely own one. So with that said, I'm gonna put a link for in the description below. If you're curious about these, if you wanna check these out, um, I think you should own one. Uh, they're 20 couple bucks and I guarantee if you're buying and selling more than a couple guitars a year, this will save you more than it will cost you. Um, it will give you some detail that will tip you off about this being a good deal or a bad deal. Now, this is one part of the information. Use this, use the reverb price guide, use eBay completed listings, really helpful. So this video idea originally started out as a live video and because of just bad internet connection and just all the craziness that always seems to happen on the live shows on Friday afternoons, this video didn't happen in the way that I wanted to. So I created it into a standalone video. Um, there is another helpful resource. If you want to buy and sell guitars as a side hustle, or you wanna get the right guitar for you faster, one of the best tools that I have right now is the buyer's guide. So this is a buyer's guide that I wrote last year. It will help you find cool guitars, know how much they're worth, know how to negotiate, it's a really helpful tool. And so I'll put a link in the description down below. Buy that, ask me questions, use my website, reach out, ask questions as you're finding guitars. I love helping people find the right guitars faster. So thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy Shepard. I am the guitar hunter and you get to be a guitar hunter too. You get to fill the world with music and friendship. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later.